Good afternoon. Uh, just wanted to let everybody know that this is the Blueprint Intergovernmental Agency City Stormwater Project uh, public involvement for the Market District Project. We'll start in a few minutes. All right, we'll get started in about one minute, everybody. I just wanted to keep you all informed. You're on the Blueprint Intergovernmental Agency and City Stormwater Project for Market District's public involvement session. And we'll start in about one minute. Okay, I have two o'clock. I'm showing 16 attendees. Um, Susan Emanuel, Blueprint Public Information Officer, and Lizzie, are we good to get started? We are. Thank you. Well, hello everybody and welcome to the community meeting for the City of Tallahassee Market District Multi-Purpose Stormwater Project and Blueprints Market District Placemaking Project. I wanted to bring to everyone's attention that this online meeting is being recorded to ensure that we capture all the input accurately. I am Dan Shear, the Design and Construction Manager at Blueprint Intergovernmental Agency, and I will be moderating this meeting. The sessions this week focus on the Market District Park and related infrastructure improvements. However, I wanted to acknowledge that there is another community event scheduled for a similar time as our Thursday evening session. The Great Spaces Summit Library Lecture Series is scheduled for Thursday, October 22nd at 5.30 p.m. And this event is sponsored by the Leon County Government, the Center for Active Design, and the Knight Foundation. It will not be focused on the park, but instead is a more general session about placemaking in the Market Street business area. Just like this session is being recorded, that event will also be recorded and posted to the Leon County Library Lecture Series Great Spaces Summit YouTube channel, the Leon County YouTube channel, sometime next week. This session that you're currently in will last about 90 minutes and we'll do our best to include everyone's input in the allotted time, but please be aware that we will have additional webinar sessions tomorrow and also the availability to contact the project team through email or phone as well as all our contact information and feedback capability is listed on our website. Our format for this event is a presentation of the survey results and preliminary test fits of park concepts from our key team members, followed by an open comment or question answer session that will be moderated by me. 
I wanted to introduce Sue Tansky, who is with Blueprint Intergovernmental Agency. She is the Blueprint Market District Placemaking Project Manager. It is my pleasure to also introduce our panel today. Our panel is Jason Smith, Kurt Reeder, and Mary Margaret Jones. Jason is an expert in our community for stormwater design and policy, and Jason will also be responsible for managing all the infrastructure related items on this project, such as roadway improvements, utilities, and parking. Kurt is a principal, and Mary Margaret is the president of Hargraves Jones Landscape Architecture Firm. They are globally renowned for the transformation of neglected urban sites, waterfronts, and campuses into iconic landscapes. They will be the individuals that will integrate the amenities that could be included at the park along with the stormwater and roadway elements of the project to create a vibrant new community space. It's also important to note that Hargraves Jones is working for DPB and Associates who is overseeing all improvements throughout this project. And now a brief introduction to the project. This project was identified and listed in the 2014 Blueprint Ballot Initiative for the Blueprint 2020 program funded by your local one cent sales tax to implement community infrastructure projects in Leon County and the city of Tallahassee. The public outreach and technical analysis regarding Blueprint's park project will result in the development of a park concept that will be presented to the Intergovernmental Agency Board, the IA Board, comprised of all city and county commissioners for final approval early next year. We have already received input on park features through prior and ongoing outreach efforts, and the final park concept will integrate the community's vision for the park that <clears throat> park with what is both financially feasible and physically possible on the site. Both projects build from and align with the market district sense of place plan and will be planned, designed, and possibly constructed together as many components are interrelated. I am now gonna play a video on the current status of the infrastructure improvements. The director of Blueprint, Autumn Calder, will have some recorded remarks at the end of the presentation. Susan? I'm gonna share my screen. It takes a couple steps. So bear with me, please. Well, since the last public engagement meeting in August, um, we've been working on preliminary engineering concepts for the stormwater management system, uh, roadways, and intersection improvements. And we I'm are not seeing your screen, Susan. About I'm sorry? We are not seeing your screen. Thank you. All right, seeing your final box, but not the presentation. Thank you. Well, since the last public engagement meeting in August, um, we've been working on preliminary engineering concepts for the stormwater management system, uh, roadways and intersection improvements. And I'm going to talk for just a few minutes about these concepts. I apologize, let me try again, please.
I've lost the Zoom screen. So if you give me just a minute, I got to get back to um, that, please. Dan, I might need a little technical assistance. I was reading my mind. Hold on one second. You're sharing cancel. your screen. Please cancel that. Okay. What are you trying to share? Oh, that's that's your window. If you go to my desktop. Is this it? Mm -hmm. Well, since the last public engagement oh, in here. August, um, we've been working on. Thank you. Let's do this. And then let's go back here. Sorry, everybody. We're working through this. I don't see the file on here. It doesn't. Yeah. Yep. Oh, we it. There we go. Got it. On preliminary engineering concepts for Thank the you. stormwater management system, uh, roadways, and intersection improvements. And I'm going to talk for just a few minutes about these concepts. Um, we've developed a schematic drainage plan for the project, which all drains to the West Stormwater Facility before discharging off-site. The schematic plan includes water quality treatment components, rate control and flood protection components, and water feature elements. The West Pond, adjacent to the Hawks Nest and Bob and Trace neighborhoods, is the first major component of the infrastructure imp improvements that will be constructed. This eight and a half acre wet detention facility will provide water quality treatment and flood control for over 250 acres of contributing area, including the park and roadway improvements. It will also provide retrofit stormwater quality treatment for about 40 acres of currently untreated runoff from the west and northwest. The west pond includes a permanently wet pool area shown in blue and a littoral shelf with wetland planting shown here in light green. Final design and permitting of this facility are underway and construction is slated to begin in the first quarter of next year. The East Park area will include a constructed wetland and stormwater pond amenity. Details of these two components are being determined during the programming and master site planning currently underway with the park. Preliminary engineering concepts for McClay Boulevard and McClay Commerce Drive have been developed and the associated engineering report is being finalized. As can be seen here, the concept for McClay Commerce Drive is a two lane divided road with a raised landscape median. On street parking is being proposed on the north side of this roadway. Due to traffic volumes and design consideration, turn lanes are not proposed along McClay Commerce Drive. Based on traffic engineering analysis and safety considerations for pedestrians, bicyclists, and vehicular traffic, roundabouts are proposed at the intersections of McClay <laughs> Commerce Drive with both Martin Hirsch Road and McClay Commerce Drive with McClay Boulevard. A similar concept of a two-lane divided roadway with landscape medians is, is proposed for McClay Boulevard. And just to note, I, I rotated this view 90 degrees, so north is to the right on this picture. A northbound left turn lane is proposed at the entrance to McClay Hammock at Mosswood Chase, and mid-block left turn lanes are proposed at some locations. All infrastructure improvements are proposed with combinations of wide concrete sidewalks and multi-use trails that will provide interconnectivity with other proposed market district projects, such as the park and enhanced stormwater features. Uh, all these exhibits will be posted to the project website for further examination shortly following uh, our meeting this morning. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Kurt Reeder of Hargraves Jones Landscape Architects. Thank you, Jason. Let's see this up here. Now, 
There we go. Um, today we will continue on with park programming. All right. Uh, let's start with the schedule. And as a reminder that we are early in the process of programming and master site planning for the park. And as Jason just pointed out a moment ago, the larger stormwater and roadway improvements are progressing slightly ahead of and on a slightly different schedule, though we are closely coordinated. As Jason, um, um, we expect to reconnect with you again in mid-December with three site plan concepts and through a similar set of meetings. And the goal is to return with the recommended program to be presented to the Blueprint Board in February. It's at that point, documentation would begin uh, at some point in the spring of 2021. So our agenda for today includes two topics. One, a synopsis of the public meeting comments and the online survey, plus a first pass at test fits for a possible program of activities and inviting your feedback today. In mid-August, we held three Zoom presentations. Each had roughly 50 live participants, and we had a lively question and answer at the conclusion of each of those meetings. And we distilled this feedback into four slides titled questions, concerns, opportunities, and support uh, regarding uh, some of these detailed topics. So regarding some of the questions we heard, participants asked several over the course of the three days regarding various topics, including Greenway along the Western Utility Corridor, which is um, which Blueprint directly addressed as not having, um, the planning is not proceeding and is not a part of this project. Uh, we also heard questions about traffic congestion, road improvements, and parking spaces, which the city has indicated are proceeding concurrently with the park effort. And we also heard advocacy for greater ADA and pedestrian connections across the district. Finally, questions regarding the schedule and funding, all of which we responded to live during the August event. So in terms of concerns, attendees voiced several concerns about specific items, including proximity of trails to neighbors on the West End, and in particular, the, the aforementioned Greenway alignment along the West Utility Corridor, not a part of this project. But also the proximity of the park to residences with regard to noise, lighting, and security, and again, vehicular congestion and parking. We also heard opinions regarding the appropriateness of bike skills course relative to the limited space available within this park boundary. So in terms of um, opportunities, participants noted that a market district per, uh, park uh, should appeal to a broad spectrum of users and notable comments included making this park different from Cascades or Tom Brown Park or from other municipal parks. Comments advocated for improved pedestrian access to the park from various neighborhoods and across the district is really one of the core promises of this park. So Zoom attendees provided a number of targeted suggestions for the park and to make these a little bit easier to consume for us today, we have categorized these according to six basic topics, uh, overall specific structures, bike skate, vegetation, and connectivity. So using six color-coded topics, as I just described, that results in six uh, kind of mini word clouds. So word cloud, uh, we're using the number of responses we got and we're illustrating those through their point size. So the bigger the point size and the bolder it is, the more comments we got back. The smaller, the fewer comments we got back. So some of these were about general advocacy for a park while others sought to provide a distinction about specific topics. And in particular, um, several respondents differentiated between biking overall as being good. There was a consensus for that. And then there were further questions about a bike park, um, which was um, had no more mixed results. And I should note that our public meetings preceded conversations about bike skills uh, at a later date. So with that, we'll shift over to the much larger results from the online survey. And the survey, the online survey had 14 questions and it attracted more than 1,200 respondents over the nine days it was active. And rather than read through to you each of these questions on this one page, I've broken it out into the slide. So first off, 98% of the respondents live within a 10 mile radius with most residing in the uh, 32312 or the 32309 zip codes, both on the north side of Tallahassee and bracketing the park site shown here is a pink circle. 
The majority of the respondents were in the 36 to 45 age bracket, with the remainder more closely distributed between the 25 to 35 and those older than 46 brackets. There was not so much feedback from the under 25 bracket of post high school, post college age residents. 45% of the respondents visit the district weekly with 20% visiting daily. And unsurprisingly, most visit the district for restaurants, shopping, and socializing. A very small number of respondents actually work in the district. Nevertheless, the responses reinforce the label of market for the district as a place to exchange goods and services and to generally socialize. So for question four, the range of the specific reasons respondents visit the district include daily and weekly household related tasks. Those include services, self-care, and socializing with friends. And you can see, you can begin to see the, the great wealth of, of different reasons people visit the district. And most visitors to the district travel in from between one to five miles away and those within five to 10 miles away. Most all drive to the market district and would do so for the proposed park. Upgraded sidewalks and bike lanes will make it easier to get around the district into the park. And one of the continuing themes of the responses has been greater connectivity, the better for the district, the better for the park. And let's car focus. That said, question six points out that cars remain the most obvious dominant uh, form of transportation to and through the district with several respondents emphasizing their own current mountain biking across portions of the site and they would expect to do so. Three quarters of respondents anticipate coming to the market district park with others, fewer for a strictly solitary experience. Question eight, the majority of respondents anticipate bringing their spouse or significant other, friends or children, fewer dogs uh, are expected to be brought. And that surprised us because Florida has a 40% do dog ownership rate, and that's just above the national average of 38%, and yet 26% of respondents indicated a willingness or interest in bringing a dog here. There is an even distribution of children at children's ages uh, with 42% 40 having no children at home among the respondents. So we get to the meat of it here. The last four questions get into greater park detail and they focus primarily on movement along pathways for running and walking and playing on a playground or splash pad. Results emphasize a desire for shaded spaces to gather and socialize with a preference for open vegetated spaces rising toward the top of the list along with shade. Uh, specialized activities drift down the list a bit. Those include court games, public art, bike facility and dog park and skate. <clears throat> the second part of question 10 asks respondents for greater specificity. So that allowed uh, respondents to write in detailed responses. Uh, looking at these responses as a word cloud breaks the data out into generic, breaks it out of what I've been showing you so far as generic bar graph categories and into specific activities. And this helps emphasize through uh, the size of the font and the darkness of the text, the frequency with which respondents favor a multi-use path, gardens, shade, event space, it's multi-use, and still more shade in, in the form of a structure, shade structure. Question number 11 pulls back a little bit further from the particulars of a proposed park to identify the feel of this park with respondents, uh, responses covering a broad spectrum of as aspirations, some passive, all family and community focused. On question 12, Cascades and Tom Brown Park top the list of local municipal parks that best exemplify what the district park should strive for. Uh, and zooming out a little bit further to encompass the entire panhandle for question 13, we were surprised to see that both Tom Brown and Cascades still top the list amongst all regional parks, even once factoring in the larger golf parks. And the consensus is that the city parks have a lot more to offer than some of these larger state and more expansive federal parks in terms of activities and their upkeep. On question 13, we also asked why a particular park is favored with attributes of these parks uh, centered on a diversity of things to do. So responses emphasize the promise of shade and wide open spaces for any number of conceivable activities. In short, 
Uh, parks generally provide a compelling reason to leave your home, to see something or someone, and to move beyond the limited space of your own home, regardless of how small or big it might be, to explore something. So the final question was 14, and respondents were asked to uh, provide additional comments, and many of the 460 plus comments provide support for the park in general. It is very clear the enthusiasm was high. Several were effusive with enthusiasm for the uh, park, while just 17 um, provided a variety of reasons against. Children's play garnered considerable feedback with six times as many advocates or a splash pad compared to those against. And a custom partially shaded inclusive playground was more than eight times as popular as, as those indicated um, dissent. The written responses provided greater insight into the bike skills, advanced mountain biking and skateboarding topics. Uh, advocates to opponents were nearly evenly matched regarding the KCCI bike skills. We can distinguish between biking generally and a bike skills course because the written responses differentiate detail. Mountain bike advocates detailed their preference for challenging off-road trails and progressive challenges well beyond a basic skills course. Several wrote specifically against single-use features like a pump track or similar features just for mountain bikers. And support for um, support for a skate park was evenly split, with several supporters noting that integrating skatable features across the park would also be a welcome alternative. So what does that tell us? There, there's roughly parity between advocates and opponents for each of these three um, park components. A few noted that mountain bike use of the utility corridor was even fun to wash from their residential property. Farmer's market, vendor stalls, and food trucks provide another potential reason to visit a park. Farmer's market advocates wrote of missing the activity district. Um, however, there was no support for a permanent vendor stalls or tables uh, with a handful explicitly speaking out against that. Food trucks attracted several supporters with um, a few speaking out against as well. Parking is a polarizing topic. topic. Predictably, with advocates for plentiful parking and a similar amount aiming for the bare minimum of parking, and that represents an effort to minimize sprawl and protect the limited acreage for park uses. Few advocated for a dog park or a pet-friendly features, while more were outspoken in their dislike of a dog park and just one advocate for a cat park, if you can believe it. I include this only to illustrate that we dug really deeply into the public comments and into the results to, to have a firm understanding of, of what we heard from you all. Other topics were far less born again and amounted to advocacy only. To make this more consumable, we have assigned a text size proportional to the number of responses within each of the next five categories. Shade dominated all the topics with wide open, flexible green space, a close second, and native plants round out this category for vegetation. For connectivity, uh, building upon the earlier discussion of bike skills and skating, many respondents emphasized that a multi-use pavement for walking and running and cycling were preferable to a dedicated use area for bike skills or skating or off-road cycling. Forging stronger pedestrian and bike only connections to and from the park between commercial properties and residential neighborhoods to the north and the west were specifically and often emphasized. Blueprint has already stated that this project will not include an updated north south greenway connection to McClay State Park along the utility corridor given the prior resident feedback. So it was surprising then to record um, some support for this at, at this process. Finally, a dozen noted that traffic congestion and road improvements are merited and the city has already progressed on determining the rotaries and streetscape upgrades. Regarding active recreation beyond cycling, skate and play components, pickleball was clearly dominant with volleyball making a low level showing. There are very few advocates for a football field, basketball court, bocce or disc golf. You can see them really small in the distance there. Relative to other specific components, complementing both the shade tree and farmer's market advocacy, more than a dozen respondents specifically asked for shade structures or a multi-use pavilion. Others commented that lighting must be subdued and avoid glare into adjacent residences. Um, finally, I believe here, 
The general comment Cascades was noted as a really good precedent, though if it had more shade, it would be great. So that's our opportunity for the Market District Park is focusing on shade. Others advocated that the Market District should be unique, park should be unique and different from other Tallahassee parks. And ultimately this park needs to be friendly, approachable, safe and secure and, indis and distinctive. With that, I'm going to hand this off to Mary Margaret Jones. Thank you, Kurt. All right. Okay, so as you can see, whoop, that changed view. Hang on. Should be able to hold this time. So as you can see from what Kurt just took you through, there are a lot of ideas and desires uh, for this park. And our job now is to, is to come to you with a balance of those desires and to most importantly, create a landscape framework that will last for generations within which many of these uh, desired programs can evolve over time because desires for what people want to do in parks will evolve over time. So we have broken down the input we've gotten from you into these four categories, play, socialize, connect, meaning physical connections, as opposed to social connections, and nature. Now, this diagram is very important to note that all of these are in the same scale as the site. So in this upper left-hand corner, you have the site, and then these are all the various desires for things to do on that site. Now, some of them show various sizes for, for one thing. So we're not trying to put all of these on the site, but nonetheless, you can see there are a lot of different desires. Uh, so at this point, we're not showing you proposed solutions. We are just giving you a sense of scale as we test fit some of these desired programs. And you see by color, these are broken down with play and recreational features in pink and green uh, designating more natural features, blue for connectivity features and socialize in orange. Now I will take you through these one by one so you can get a better sense of each one. So we start with playground. We heard lots of feedback about playground, positive feedback about playground. So here are some examples and the scales they would be on the site and then pictures below of what they were like, what they are like. So I start with Scissortail Park. This is a project of ours in Oklahoma City and you see the size landed on the site. And then you see a picture from above of lots of different play features. Cumberland Park in Nashville, another one of our projects you see here. And then Cascades Parks and Tom Brown Park, and you see the sizes of those played areas. And notice Tom Brown, for instance, the light outline is the area of green that it also is play uh, versus the area of actual, actual play structures, which is in the pink. So you can see that uh, children's play can be a substantial uh, feature of the site and take up a substantial amount of size. There was also a lot of positive feedback about a splash pad and splash pads can also come in a range of sizes. And, and of course, given the Miami weather in the summer, uh, splash pads are a great feature for kids of all ages to cool off. So on the far right, you see our project in Denver Union Station and you see the number of adults. Uh, Carruthers Park being much smaller. So Denver Union Station being here, Carruthers Park being just a small splash pad with a few jets of water. And then, and then in terms of size, sort of in between Cascades Park in uh, Tallahassee. Now, dog play. Dog play can come in a variety of types. If you look at the Bradfordville example, that's probably not what we're suggesting is appropriate here. And I would call that more a dog park for exercise and for training of dogs. And what we're talking about here for this project, especially given the feedback that we got, is more of a, a place to socialize with your dog and for your dogs to play, which might be smaller like the Curtis Hickson dog park uh, example on the left and that you see on the site. Um, exercise. 
Now we've heard a variety of, uh, and I think I just said Miami when I meant to say Tallahassee. I, I apologize for that in terms of weather. I, I think they both have similar weather. We've, we've done projects in Miami, so I apologize for that. Um, play, exercise. Uh, it can either be a destination uh, exercise station like you see from Magazine Beach and the, and the image on the left, uh, or it can be a loop. And I think given the kinds of feedback we got about uh, connectivity and access, a loop could be dual purpose or multi-purpose, and there could be fitness uh, stations along such a loop. And for example, you see here the Lafayette Park uh, Fitness Trail, which is almost a mile long, and you see how it could loop around. <clears throat> and then finally, court games. Uh, we did not get a lot of response vis-a-vis -vis court, games, court games, except for pickleball. And here you see one pickleball court, or here you see three. So something that's fairly easy to fit into a park, and it's fairly easy to fit in in a multi-purpose way. You can have a surface that can be used for pickleball and other things as well. Uh, and then bike play. And there's, of course, been a lot of conversation about what does that mean? And I think to, to go back to the feedback we got to make this a place that is welcoming for all and that is community focused and, and family focused, we would see bike play that's integral to the park, integral to the landscape, and definitely one that speaks to a lot of people and not just a focused single user group. So we would look to ways to integrate bike play um, with uh, the park. And you can see here various sizes, but perhaps it's more of a loop. You know, perhaps it is co uh, coordinated with the idea of a fitness circuit. Uh, we, we will look at various ways of achieving and, and looking at uh, multiple solutions to these various desires. And then finally, a skate park. Uh, there was, as Kurt said, there was sort of mixed feedback about a skate park. Uh, and you see here two facilities, one in Tallahassee and one in Europe, which is the one on the right. They're both integrated within parks. The one on the right, even more integrated with uh, landscape landforms, for instance. But again, with a skate park, you get into the issue of uh, less variety of users. Um, and more uh, targeted users. So how to, how to incorporate these more focused user groups within an overall park for everyone is our challenge and our goal to balance. Okay, so now we get into socialize. Um, and these are three different sizes of open lawns from one acre to three acres. And you see examples down below. So Discovery Green, three acres of lawn. Discovery Green is a 12 acre park in Houston. Uh, Chattanooga Waterfront Park, an acre and a half. And then Carruthers Park, a little bit less than an acre. And you can see the kinds of uh, space in any of those three would take up um, on the site. Uh, again, flexible lawn, open event space, and more examples from uh, Tallahassee, ones that you might know. And you can see, for example, how those would uh, use up a good deal of the site in some cases and fit in and balance with other uses more in other cases. Now, gathering spaces. So this is thinking about shade pavilion in a way, as you can see, landed on the site here, think of them as in a group, either whether they're the market square kind of pavilion that you're familiar with or a more multi-use shade pavilion on the right from Tampa, or they could be distributed throughout the site, more dispersed, multiple ones. So you have various gathering places in a more informal way, as you see in the Curtis Hicks and Waterfront Park on the lower right in Tampa. And then of course there is the farmer's market. So it is interesting to note the size of the corner store and church market, farmer's market on the site. So you, you, can, begin to, you can begin to see that uh, we are trying, you know, if, if we took the larger of all of these, we're trying to put 10 pounds of potatoes in a five pound bag. So we start to think of multiple solutions and parking is very much the same way. So in the presentation of the potential roadway parking, you saw these potential road, roadside uh, 15 space parking areas, but you can see then on the other hand, how much space 125 spaces would take up on the site. In these examples, you see that no matter how many we end up on the site and we will be balancing uh, what makes sense, you, you can see that we can design the parking in a way that makes it very integral to the park 
and multi-use. Now we get into nature and really nature is what we heard the most responses, positive responses about. So you start, we start with native gardens um, and they can be of a, couple, a variety of sizes. Really, this is just a matter of uh, how much we can make fit and balance with other uses, but it had a lot of positive response. Um, community gardens. Now, community gardens are different because community gardens are not necessarily public. Note that lower right-hand image. They are often fenced off because they are, they have to be managed. And the management of them is sometimes an issue. Uh, it gets into proprietary rights. But sometimes they're, um, they're highly desired and they could be, as you see in the Macon example, small. Now, pollinator gardens. Pollinator gardens could be mixed with native gardens uh, and urban gardens. As you see in these examples, Velo Garden in Dallas, for instance, that's an urban garden in downtown Dallas. But we've used plants there that attract uh, pollinators. And then you see in Cascades Park and McClay Park as well in Tallahassee examples. So the whole thing could be a pollinator garden if we look to the McClay garden as an example at 13 acres, or they could be integra integrated with other features as you see in the examples of test fits of Below and Cascades. Wetlands, now Jason mentioned that on the east side, we will be re-envisioning stormwater management and wetland and making it more of an integral part of the park. So again, you see here examples of how those features can be part of a park experience, a beautiful respite within the city, also performing a function in terms of habitat and stormwater management. And you can see the various sizes. Again, the whole park could be a wetland park. So that is a, a good place to conclude with showing you ex exam sort of exemplary con uh, uh, cases, I would say, of each of those. If we took each of those and sort of began to balance them with the feedback we got, you, be you might begin to see an array like this. And you can begin to then think about how we might land these on the site. And I'll just state one more time, as I said earlier, our goal will be to find a right balance and a right fit and to create a park that is open and welcoming for everyone, but has features that will activate and make this park safe and lively. So when we come back, as Kurt mentioned, we will show you an array of options. We will show you a few options and we might show you one that is more nature focused. What if we made this park mostly nature focused? And by the way, I forgot to mention earlier, shade trees. And that's that actually came up the most almost of anything. And you see just how much we could make this whole park uh, shaded with trees. Um, but so we will come back with this array. As I said, one might be more nature focused, one might be more recreational focused, one might be more social focused. And then we will show you some hybrids, which will ultimately be the most likely place we will all head toward a balance and a synopsis and a hybrid solution. So with that, I turn it back to Autumn. Thank you. That was a great presentation, Hargraves Jones team. I appreciate your professionalism and your skills that you bring to this project. It's been great working with you guys so far. Um, so I just want to summarize the presentation that they that they gave to us today. Um, it really illustrates our process for considering each of the suggestions that our team heard from you, um, the community. And we heard from you in August. We heard from you from emails in July and throughout, even um, as early as last week. We're still getting emails from everybody, and um, that's a great, great thing. Keep them coming. Uh, but this presentation serves as a record of the data that we received from the survey results, the questions and answers we had through that process in August. And then it shows Hargraves Jones' work in September to fit the um, the elements that were that were suggested by the community onto the site. Um, this has helped to focus our attention on which landscape types and park activities may be a good fit for this for this future park. Moving forward, we expect to have three to four concepts that will accentuate the different program mixes, uh, like Miss uh, Mary Margaret said, um, and you'll consider those at the next public outreach. Um, and then we'll continue to refine into uh, likely this kind of different hybrid concept, uh, maybe multiple concepts um, as we move into early 2021. 
And our goal is to present a recommended concept as a result of all of the work that we've done thus far and we'll do um, this winter um, into this recommended concept that we'll present to the IA board in, in likely in February. And then um, when we get the direction from our intergovernmental agency board, which is uh, the joint sitting of the city commissioners and the county commissioners is one body, uh, we'll then move into our design documents um, in the spring of 2021. All right, thank you, <clears throat> Director Calder and Susan for running that. I apologize for the technical difficulties at the beginning. Um, we practiced numerous times, I promise everybody, and it just never seems to be Murphy's Law, ever always hits at the right time. But again, um, I just also wanted to reiterate, um, this is Dan back at you as your moderator, to uh, please visit the project website, which is TallahasseeMarketDistrict.com. Again, TallahasseeMarketDistrict.com, all spelled out and that will give you all the information on the project. So now let's get started on the question and answer session, which is what all of you I'm sure are here to do. Um, we have the project team assembled and are glad that you all joined us. And we are eager to hear your questions, comments, or ideas. We do ask that you please keep your comments brief so as to give everyone an ample opportunity to be involved and also please remain muted unless recognized by the moderator to avoid audio issues for all participants. In order to give everyone a chance to be heard, we have a couple of small ground rules. Number one, please keep it civil. And then number two, please keep your comments to three minutes or less. And please be sure to click the participants button at the bottom of your screen and use that little raise hand function to let us know you'd like to be recognized. I will do my best to keep track of the order of comments, but please be patient as we try to incorporate everyone's input. If your question or comment needs a detailed response, we may ask you to leave contact information so that we can answer you completely and provide you with all the details needed. We will continue the conversation with you offline, but we'll be sure to post the answer to the website for the benefit of everyone in the community and in the question and answer session. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and open it up to questions. Again, please use the raise your hand function uh, after clicking participants and we'll see your hands get raised. I see some folks getting their hands raised real quick. I did wanna acknowledge a couple in the chat real fast. Um, S.G. asks, are you considering any play fe any water play features that are not splash pads per a previous community's suggestion from the original town halls? Um, I wanted to see if Kurt, if, if you had any idea or answer to that one. Uh, the majority of the comments did focus on a splash pad type of play environment. There was one individual that spoke about a community pool and that is, uh, that is an entirely different scope um, and so we would not be pursuing a pool. Okay, Ashley, um, the director of city parks for the city of Tallahassee, would you like to add in on that? Uh, sure, thank you, Dan. I just wanted to add that we are really interested in, from our perspective, more of the um, um, water playground interactive area, more so than the uh, kind of splash pad that you would see in some of the pictures that were shared here today, or even the, um, the fountain down at Cascades. Uh, we think that the uh, the interactive, more of the playground type of, uh, of of feel for that area would be really a neat enhancement for our community. Thank you, Ashley and, and Kurt. Appreciate that. Um, with that, I'm going to bring in Mr. Bill A. I'm going to bring you in um, to the uh, chat here as uh, so you can speak. Um, Susan, I don't seem to be able to unmute Mr. Bill A. Can you please do that for me? I don't understand last time I could. Susan, can you help me out there? Or Amanda? Yes. No, I got it. I've asked Mr. Bill to uh, move over to panelist mode for the for the uh, duration of his comments. Okay, thank you. Bill, um, if you unmute your mic, we'll be able to hear you and you'll be able to express your comment question or uh, feedback. Can you hear there me? You go. There you go. Yes. Good. My name is Clay. I'm the president of the McClay Hammock Homeowners Association. Our neighborhood is literally across the fence from this park. The only thing that separates us from the park is a six foot high wooden fence. We are very concerned about noise and light pollution because our neighborhood, which is about 20 years old, has a lot of senior uh, citizens. Our 
we realized that on the survey, only 18% of the people said they wanted a bike park, yet we see in every presentation that it appears that it will be a bike park, perhaps also a skate park. And we just want to express our concern uh, for light and noise pollution. Uh, a lot of the things that you put in the park we find exciting and, and we look forward to having, but those two items do really concern us. Thank you for your time and thank you for the presentation. Thank you for your comment. I appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Bill. Um, I'm going to bring in um, Mr. Bill Etchefer, I believe is how you say that. Um, right, click, see if it'll let me do unmute. Um, it looks like you're in, Mr. Bill. Can you can you speak for us? Yes. Can you hear me now? I can. Yes, sir. Thank Good. you. Good. I am here to speak in favor of the bike play park concept, uh, largely for some of the same reasons that Ms. Manuel brought up in her presentation. It's going to be a broad usage category. It will have features that will not only appeal to children, families, teenagers, but to our seniors. And you'll see more people come. And it will be used longer during the day, bringing in families that can feed into the local business community and uh, provide some economic uh, support for our local businesses. One other thing I'd like to look at is the fact that Tallahassee is designated as a bronze level bike friendly area, which means it's bringing in people from all over the country who enjoy biking and that's clean tourism. And the more we can do to support uh, improving our biking community, the more clean tourism we can get. And of course, once again, that generates economic development. And the better place we make Tallahassee to live, uh, the more clean businesses that we can attract. So not only do we benefit from a good bike park, but all of the citizens uh, will benefit from it too. Now, as far as compared to a skate park, I can tell you I'm in my 60s. I'm not going to come out there skateboarding. So I would much prefer a bike park. And I understand Blueprint is currently building a second skate park over on uh, Family Way on Lake Bradford Road. And that, that's basically it. I'm in favor of the bike play park. Th thank you, Mr. Bill. I appreciate that. Um, thank you for, uh, for your comment. And we appreciate it. Um, next up, I'm going to bring in um, Mr. Donato, I think is how you say that, and Mr. Jim Antista will follow. So, um, the Donato, is that how I say that? Did I say that correctly? Call me Danny. <laughs> Makes it easier. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Um, I am, uh, first of all, I want to thank Jason Smith. He has been incredibly responsive to all the concerns that I've had since I'm in Hawk's Nest. I'm a former president of the Homeowners Association. And my situation is uh, that we are right up against the, uh, the stormwater drainage, um, st stormwater facility management that is going in there. So that, that's a big concern on how that's handled. And Jason has been really wonderful about keeping me appraised on that. However, let's go back to the, to the bigger issue in the park. One of the things I'm concerned about of course, as I mentioned in the past, I'm not real keen on the, I have grandkids. I'm not real keen on the bike park. I'd love to just see a playground. You know, it's, it's there's nothing, in, you know, took the kids to a playground. We had to take them to, to the one in Killarn, which we really weren't supposed to be using, but we did. So I, I think that's an important consideration. The other thing is that it's, it doesn't, I don't see anybody here from environmental or uh, from planning, uh, that whole idea, that whole something that just seemed to slip in under the wire was that development on the corner of Timberlane and uh, Martinhurst Road. It's going to be a 32 unit townhouse. Okay, that's going to spill over. I mean, it's 500. You'd be lost in there, Dan. Pardon me? Oh, I, I hear him just fine, Kurt. He's talking about a development off of Martinhurst Road. Yeah, it's, it, it's on. Martinhurst, uh, right in the corner of Martinhurst and Timberlane, very prominent area there. And my concern is with 32 units, you're going to have parking. 
and traffic. Okay, that's going to spill over into or has the potential for spilling over into the into the park area uh, that we're developing here. Uh, I'm concerned about how it doesn't. It seems like the left hand and the right hand aren't aren't together here. Uh, on this, we're talking about market district as a place, uh, a destination, and then we got townhouses coming in. Just a concern, also because that's an environmentally sensitive sensitive area as a beautiful wetland. Um, those are my, my comments. I appreciate your time and uh, good luck. This is not an easy process. That, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, you know, just acknowledging, you know, your concerns with the stormwater, but also your desire for a playground. Um, appreciate that feedback and, and your other concerns as well associated with the environmental impacts. Um, very, very well noted. Thank you. Um, I'm going to Oh, it looks like somebody, a moderator already brought in Mr. Jim. Mr. Jim, and, um, if you unmute, you'll be in the group and ready to go. Susan Emanuel is kicking it. Mr. Jim, um, we need you to unmute Antista, I think is how you say your name. Mr. Jim Antista, if you unmute, we'll be able to hear you. Got it. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Uh, my name is Jim Antista. I'm also a resident of the Hawks Nest subdivision, and I'm also a former president of the Homeowners Association, but I'm speaking as an individual. I want to compliment uh, the city for all the work done on this project and for the extreme effort you've made to get public input. And uh, also a shout out to Jason Smith, because Jason uh, first spoke to our neighborhood uh, over two years ago about this proposal. Uh, we, I support this project. I support it as was presented to us in two years ago, which was basically uh, a more passive park, which included walking trails, the tot lot, possibly a splash pad, some open space areas for shade gardens, uh, a pavilion of the size that we formerly had at the Market uh, Square Shopping Center, which I think would fit the scale of this project. And also we were uh, wanted to make sure that any of the improvements in the West Pond uh, would pose a mid minimum impact on the Hawks Nest neighborhood. And I support the comments that uh, Danny Pietro D'Angelo has made about uh, the location of the service roads of the West Pond in a way that would uh, buffer better, buffer them from the neighborhood. Uh, I really appreciate the survey. Uh, I spoke to many, many of our homeowners and encouraged them to participate. And I think they have. I do not support a bike park or a skate park or a dog park <laughs> or other active recreational uses of the area that would not be consistent with the open space and, and recreational amenities that I just talked about. I'm an avid off-road biker, at least I have been, I'm getting a little too old for it now, but uh, I certainly appreciate uh, the need to have areas for biking. I just don't think this particular space is appropriate. And having looked at the scaling that was done by one of our, uh, your consultants, it would appear to me that it would be a little bit out of scale as would a skate park. Uh, I, I support all those things. It's just that uh, I don't think this is the right location for it. Uh, so with that, um, I think I've, I've, again, I'm not speaking for the neighborhood, but I've spoken to many, many residents, I haven't found anybody particularly likes the idea of the bike park. And again, this wasn't something that was part of the original proposal that we heard back in but some years ago. Um, and with that, I want, I want again, once again, want to compliment the city of the hard work that's been done and the time taken uh, to get this project forward. And we certainly support it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jim. I appreciate your comment um, and, and your feedback and understanding you, know, you seem to prefer a passive open spaces type park and, and that's good. Thank you for your, your comments. Um, 
I see Miss Jennifer has her hand up. I'm going to move you in. If Susan Emanuel can help me with moving, there we go. I'm going to move in Jennifer and allow you to talk. If you unmute Miss Jennifer, you will be live in the session. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. My name is Jennifer. Thank you for letting me speak. Um, I, there's been a lot of work involved in this endeavor, and I'm really more an, an advocate of like the passive and open spaces. Um, I, I, I didn't know they were thinking of like wetlands. I thought that was great. Native gardens, pollinated gardens. This all sounds great. And it's a little walking area. What I'm concerned about mainly is I think there's like 18% that wanted a bike park, yet I'm hearing bike park, bike park, bike park. I'm not sure why that is, if that's not something that was um, voted on um, and got a, you know, a, a, a high mark in. Okay, and that's a great um, question. I'm gonna actually ask Kurt if he can speak to sure. how those Absolutely. were kind of meshed out and everything. So I think it's, um, it's probably a good time in this conversation to point out that when we started, uh, let's say June of this year, the conversation started on a single use skate or a single use bike park. And we've had a lot of conversations both within the client team and with other um, um, advocates in the community. And we're moving more toward open play and that means uh, an environment that has no fence, is not single use, and is not this consolidated or concentrated zone specifically for one play activity. Rather, we'd like to see um, any sort of focus on bike skills pulled out and distributed in, in a, over perhaps a larger zone. So it's not concentrated, it's not seen as a node of activity and noise. Um, and so that allows it to be better integrated into a park, regardless of where that park is. So there has been an evolution and, and I hear you that uh, there have been a lot of callers focusing on bike park, the key being bike park, uh, but the design team and the owner team are shifting more toward play with an emphasis on having that be more open-ended and less single use and more distributed. I hope that helped. So what it is exactly, we're not quite there yet, but we are uh, wrapping our arms around a lot of the great public comment that we received and trying to evolve the idea so that it's not like a bike or skate park that you have elsewhere in town. We're not trying to duplicate that. We're trying to figure out if there's a place to integrate these features, but do it in an entirely different way that's only appropriate to the market district property. Would that mean that if I was walking along the, the path that a biker could be behind me? The, the, the pathways absolutely will be multi-use for strollers, bikes, runners, walkers, those with um, you know, a cane. So yes, that's what multi-purpose means. However, if it's bike skills, the, uh, we fully hear your concern and your question. Uh, the bike skills part of it would be set away from that so that you're not having um, a tightly mixed and potential conflict zone. Okay, for me, I have fibromyalgia and a couple other health concerns. Um, I've asked a lot of the people where I live in the clay gardens and they're all saying the same thing. They don't really want a bike path. I will not feel safe walking on a bike path if bikers can come by and I, I honestly, I still don't understand if there's only 18% that want the bike park or some kind of thing like that, why it's, it keeps coming up. Well, thank, thank you, Ms. Jennifer. And like, like Kurt was saying, and I'm just gonna kind of wrap this um, up because uh, it, it's, it's a discussion that we're having on, on what we wanna see in the park. And it's not, we're, we're not saying that we're doing that or not doing that, but also to speak to Kurt in multi-use, we don't wanna exclude users, um, you know, and, and make it an exclusive park for one particular subset. So, you know, um, Kurt's got a difficult task and him and, and Mary Margaret as the, as the designers with Hargrave Jones of trying to synthesize the public input that we're getting and bring the most benefit and unique benefit to our community in this particular area, but give the folks in the area 
um, what they want to see. Um, and, and so, you know, we, we can't exclude, um, you know, certain voices that are in support of or against certain elements. We, we need to synthesize all of that input and take that into consideration as we go forward and present these, these concepts to our electeds. So for their final approval. So um, I appreciate your comment, Jennifer. We hear you loud and clear. Um, you know, you don't want the bi a, a bike and pedestrian conflict zone. Um, and and we, we do hear you. I want, I want you to, to realize that, um, but I, we're not gonna solve that debate or that discussion in this medium. Um, but if you want, you can reach out to the project team offline and we can continue that discussion and hear, hear your more pointed concerns and, and, and download those um, at that time. But I, I really wanna incorporate other public input at this time. And, um, but feel free to reach out to us offline. Sue Tansky um, can get you in touch as our, as our Blueprint Project Manager with any of the project team experts and facilitate a one-on-one. -on -one. But I think that that's more appropriate at this time. But we do hear you about the conflict and your health concerns associated and, and your, your nervousness with that conflict. And um, we are taking that under advisement for sure. But uh, thank you, Ms. Jennifer, for your comment. I'm gonna um, go ahead and, and bring in um, um, Mr. Anath Prasad, um, as he has not had an opportunity to talk. Mr. Prasad, if, if you unmute, you'll be able to speak. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, sir, Mr. Secretary. Hey, right, thank you. Hey, no, uh, I agree with the comments, the gentleman that uh, was in the neighborhood. I, I run along this corridor three times a week. You go to a premier, I live there, <laughs> right off McClay Road. I think an open park is, is what's needed, uh, just walkable, you know, those kind of things rather than creating a skate, uh, a skateboard park or uh, not a lot of, I think the, your, your survey indicated not a lot of pet owners. I don't see them walk dogs or cats along that corridor, uh, you know. Uh, so I think that kind of fits in with what you, you've seen. One of the things I would ask if you could maybe on the website have is that that obviously the sidewalks are not part of your project. I think there's another project coming with Blueprint that's going to extend. There's a bunch of sidewalk gaps around that area, right? You know, uh, if you look at McClay Hammock, the sidewalk ends next to that office complex, and there's not a sidewalk along that corridor. There's been talk about having sidewalk along McClay Road itself. So maybe a map where you could show those connectivities, but make a notation that is not part of your project and people are gonna get a good big picture of how that whole thing is gonna fit in. But uh, great job, looking forward to the completed uh, project. Thank you, Secretary Prasad. I'm, I'm gonna ask Jason if he doesn't mind to speak to what um, infrastructure, sidewalk infrastructure is included with this particular project. And then um, I'll speak to the higher level market district placemaking project after Jason talks. Yeah, sure, Dan. I'm going to attempt to share my screen and go back to one of the slides from my presentation and talk from that picture. So this is from these slides are updated down on the website and they're available for further inspection and study. But but this slide shows pretty well in these white, you know, thick white lines of proposed sidewalks. You'll notice they're they're pretty wide sidewalks meant for uh, for for lots of people. Um, and so that extends all the way up McClay Boulevard, um, all the way there to the entrance with McClay Hammock. So hopefully that answers your question specifically, Dan, about the sidewalks proposed for this project. Thank you, Jason, for sharing that um, with the group and, and Secretary. And I did want to um, follow that up with, yes, Mr. Secretary, there is a larger project that um, Sue Tansky is leading, and we call it the Market District Placemaking Project, which is an overall blueprint project that does have a, a, you know, a fixed budget. And this is park is a small component of that, but you are correct that we are looking at other um, uh, infrastructure enhancements, intersections, pedestrian connectivity, sidewalks, multi-use paths in that area. And in, in also including studying um, a potential sidewalk along McClay, I think it's Boulevard that runs along the state park there um, or McClay Road all the way to Meridian Road. Um, so we are studying that as well um, to enhance connectivity for multimodal users in that area. So you are the, correct. The, the intersection at the, uh, where the Shamrock dry cleaners are, right? Just further down, you yes, know sir. what I'm talking about? Yes. Is, is there going to be a roundabout? Is that what I saw there or no? No, 
so not, not touching this, that. Yeah, not in this project. Okay. That's actually right. right there where, um, I don't know, Osaka, there used to be a credit union there. It's kind of right. in that area, um, but we are studying that intersection at Sam Rock Cleaners, but we're not sure from a right-of-way perspective what that's going right, to right, right. It probably needs a light to just so much traffic there <laughs> trying to make a turn. So anyway, great job. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Take yes, care. Sir. Um, we will go ahead and move on to um, S.G. I'm bringing you in and um, sorry, I, I can't synthesize the name, but um, you're welcome to speak and, and address the group. Thank you, Dan. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. Um, my name is Susanna and I just want to say I support the idea of bike play in this space. Uh, there are already a significant amount of bikers already are in and around this community biking to, from Kalar and from adjacent neighborhoods. Um, we're not all in Hawk Rise, so we have a need a little more efficient means of getting to Market District. And I certainly grew up here as a kid, um, biking to Alpesh or biking to Bikes a Million. And you'll still see that today if you go in Kalar. So many people are biking in and around to get to their adjacent areas. Um, and I also wanna point out maybe for people who have some concerns on that is the more people you have biking to this area that offloads the stress on parking. So there are, you know, there's give and take here and we're all gonna share this space and have fun together. And so that's, you know, a, a small win that people can consider if they have some stress or concerns about biking and the safer, more connected infrastructure we can provide for people who aren't just walking, people who aren't just using their cars is gonna make a better park and a well-used park in general. Um, and beyond that, as far as like not hearing enough comments on it, I would say not everyone has time in a workday to contribute midday to a town hall. So that's why you see um, town halls that scheduled at different times of day. And so let's just be considerate that uh, just because we're not all hearing it right now that people are submitting feedback um, in support of biking and among many other uh, wonderful amenities coming to this space. Uh, my last comment is wonderful, wonderful presentation. Thank you guys. Uh, thank you, Susanna, for um, your input there. I also wanna acknowledge that you did put a comment in as well that um, you, you did not mean a pool with the play, with the water play area and you meant more along water playgrounds, which I think you heard Ashley, the director of parks mention. Um, so we do acknowledge that um, miscommunication there and appreciate the clarity there on that. Um, and also want to acknowledge uh, Mr. Bill's comment about uh, adding up the sum of the percentages and um, acknowledging that you think that there may be as high as a 35% um, favor of some type of bike concept. So acknowledge those comments real quick. Um, I'm going to bring in Ms. Tarsha, I think is how you say that. Um, Ms. Tarsha, if you unmute, you will be ready to go. Yes, hi, thank you, but my name is Tarsha, and I uh, too am in favor of the bike play. We've been living in um, in the Benton area for about eight years, and um, my daughter had learned how to ride at Cascades Park, and um, the Market District is just an area that we, we like to walk to uh, from our home uh, on Thomasville Road, and biking would be a, a great option to have a destination to go to. Uh, so we really um, look forward to something that would include biking that the entire family could do. She's she's in eighth grade, so she's not a little kid anymore. Um, so this would interest her to to learn a little bit more about biking and the rules of the road and and the uh, the mountain biking that she's wanting to get into as she gets into high school. So I really think it would be an asset to the market district, not only for for families that want to uh, entertain themselves for. Um, exercise and entertainment area reasons, but also to to draw more um, attraction to the market district businesses because uh, I know that they're also um, experiencing some some low with with COVID nineteen and to to have a, an added attraction that brings not just um, people there but foot traffic. I think I think the bike park um, and a bike play area would would be. Uh, a really great option. So I'm in favor of that. And also, by the way, I, I didn't get a chance to hear the entire presentation, but the, the parts that I did, especially the social and nature and, and all those, it was a fantastic presentation. So thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks, Tarsha. Thank, thank you for your comments, Tarsha. Um, I do want to acknowledge, it's a great segue real quick before I jump into Mr. Brad McLeod is um, 
that the presentation is loaded on our website for your viewing. If it's not there yet, it will be there soon. Um, so if you want to view that again or share that with anybody um, in the community that you know and, and, and enhance awareness of this project, that's a great option um, that's out there for you if you choose to do that. Um, also wanted to note that with the talk on the bike skills, um, it was brought up last time that, that uh, last town hall that we may actually reduce cars because you saw that the cars was the biggest biggest um, word in on the screen, meaning that's how most people get to the market district, but the goal would be to reduce the cars and increase the bikes and pedestrians if we can create a more walkable and, and multimodal community. So so I acknowledge that um, and we all agree that that multiple uses is, is, is beneficial to the overall market district area. Um, so with that, I'm going to bring in Mr. Brad McLeod into the room and um, if you unmute, sir, you will be ready to go. Okay, yeah, thanks so much for having me on and just for having this opportunity to, to listen on, on the Zoom call. Uh, I am an avid outdoor recreationalist. Uh, I do a fair amount of mountain biking and have used that corridor over the last few years um, to, to come from Market Square, come from higher ground from the bike shop over to uh, McClay Gardens uh, for the riding you know, around uh, Overstreet there. And um, I guess always, you know, <laughs> several of us, you know, what if, what if this was eventually uh, some type of a, a park or a greenway, you know, like the Miccosukee Greenway. Um, and, you know, with all that, um, you know, looking at the, the different, uh, you yeah, know, the mountain biking uh, skills area, you know, I'd love to see that. Um, you know, um, you're talking about skateboarding. Uh, that's great. I, um, I still skateboard to this day. I actually skateboarded in these ditches 20 years ago as a kid. Um, you know, but are there ways that we can work with the neighborhood? That's something that um, I definitely think we have to be, you know, very cognizant of. Uh, you're talking about noise. And um, so, you know, are there ways through plantings or buffering um, to be able to have this sort of passive, active recreation area uh, through that corridor and connect Market Square and McClay. That's, it's, it's, I think it's something that we're all agreeing is needed. You know, how is it going to come about? So um, I, I just, um, again, you know, I, I, I am a mountain biker. Uh, I, I did not fill out the form earlier. My, my apologies. Uh, I, I guess I'm one of the missing 18%. Um, and so, um, I appreciate that being at least even included in a discussion. Um, you know, how is that going to take place? You're talking about you know, bikers and walkers, hikers, runners in the same place. Uh, you know, we see a lot of that uh, Miccosukee Greenway. Um, we see a lot of that over at um, the Offord Greenway, uh, Tom Brown Park. You know, are there ways to, for all of us to use that area uh, in a safe manner? Um, I think we can draw on some of those examples of those parks that we have in the city that do have hiking, um, walking, and biking. Cascade Park, again, you know, there's, there's numerous examples there. So, uh, but I, I just appreciate you allowing me to speak and just to listen in. And, uh, and I think this is really well thought out. And I think you're taking all the right steps. And, and uh, I know it's probably exhausting to listen to all of us, but I, I do appreciate you listening to my one little bit. So uh, thanks for the opportunity. Thank you, Brad. And um, on that, I, I would to see if Kurt could speak to integrating, you know, in the buffers and the things of how we integrate passive and, and, and active and maybe some strategies around that. Um, since we don't have any more hands raised right now, Kurt, maybe take this opportunity to, um, to indulge that a little bit. Well, as we um, we had a little bit of this discussion yesterday, where we we recognize and we acknowledge there are a lot of abutting residential property owners. There is, uh, to some degree, some fencing, and there is some existing vegetation. And one of our goals for this project is to dramatically expand the vegetation, simply because it provides the shade, it provides the cooling. It provides the visual buffer and distance between existing uh, homes and proposed activities. Right now, there are very few lights uh, in the park property today. And so if that changes in the future, how might we use the landscape as a dimensional and vertical separation between who is there today and the park space that's um, proposed to come? 
So, and within that, uh, yesterday we spoke a little bit about how we can use landscape as a framework uh, over the long term as that matures in with in um, within which we can have different program uses, whether they are entirely passive or active, they can be nestled into that green framework, whether it's wetlands or dense tree planting, shrubs. Um, so we think there's great potential to balance a lot of these different uh, seemingly uh, competing uses together, but to do so through a landscape framework. Yeah, thank you, Kurt. I appreciate that. And, and someone I just wanted to point out did, did acknowledge as well that there are multiple sessions of this that we are conducting, and that is correct. Uh, we did a morning, we're doing an afternoon now, and we'll do an evening tomorrow. Um, so we are committed to trying to get everybody's uh, work schedule accommodated in, in some form or fashion so they can jump on if, if they feel the need. But I'm always listening to emails and, and, and solicitations off the website. I am going to acknowledge there's about 10 minutes left in our hour and a half. Um, so if you want to raise your hand and be heard, please uh, click the participants button in the bottom and, and hit that raise hand button um, so we can acknowledge it or um, put your comment in the chat and we're happy to acknowledge it that way as well. Uh, we do have expansive um, involvement on this. Um, you know, Blueprint considers usually three or 400 comments a huge success from a public involvement standpoint. I just want to point out we've had over 1,200 comments on this um, project. So Sue Tansky has been working really hard along with Kurt and the rest of the consultant team to, to categorize those and download them and synthesize them. And, and, and it is a lot of work. So I do want to commend our entire project team here publicly that um, they're doing a, a yeoman's job as, as commissioners say sometimes um, with how hard they're working to, um, to get all of this stuff put together and, and again, present your project. This is not Blueprint's project. This is not City of Tallahassee's project. This is the community's project and we're here to implement your vision and what you wanna see in this community park um, that you're gonna use ultimately. I mean, I live in the area too. I plan to use it, but you know, um, I, I don't get a vote, unfortunately. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, we look forward to that. Again, if you wanna raise your hand, um, please do uh, and, and be heard be seen and be uh, recognized. Um, that's a, it's a great opportunity um, to bend our ear and, and, and get your input in. Um, Jason wants to add. Go ahead, Jason, please. Yeah, Dan, I just want to go back for a minute while there are no comments waiting in the in the queue um, to a couple of things that were said earlier um, today and yesterday. I'm going to share my screen and talk just a minute about one of the um, exhibits that I shared in my presentation. I, I just want to clarify for the, the folks that live in um, Hawk's Nest and Bob and Trace that the West Stormwater Facility here on the west side of the substation is not part of the um, park programming and effort that's here on the east side of the project. So um, these uses that Kurt and, uh, and their team are considering are not being proposed for this, this west pond. Um, so just that, that was something that, was, that came up yesterday afternoon in our debrief and, and wanted to make that point clear. So thanks for, thanks for letting me share that. Thank you, Jason. I appreciate that. Yeah, you know, you just spoke to something very important. Um, you know, we are doing a larger market district project that um, we've talked a little bit about earlier and briefly touched on a few of the topics associated with that. But um, the interconnectivity of all these projects, and I know, um, is really important. And we, we plan to do that. You know, these are not being uh, developed in vacuums and isolation and silos, however you want to say it, as Jason just pointed out. You know the, the stormwater pond which is not part of the park but is actually going to connect and interconnect and we plan to do that and try to do that with all the enhancements that we plan to make to the market district through the place making effort that um, is expected to take multiple years it's not going to happen overnight but um, it's an important project nonetheless so thank you jason for bringing that up that's a very very good topic um let's see i see a comment here in the chat box it says you might want to mention the study underway by the crtpa to add a multi-use path along thomasville sure um you know i i'm not um at liberty to speak super from um high on that that is the crtpa project and the crtpa is kind of our transportation planning agency in the five county region here um in north florida but uh you're correct there are plans to, to bring a multi-use trail um, up Thomasville Road. Uh, if it's going to connect or how it's gonna to connect to the market district is, is still um, being debated. Um, I believe right now it gets to Metropolitan or somewhere in that area south of Interstate 10, but they are talking about expanding it to get to the market district. So good point. 
Um, but again, we do not have high fidelity on that right now. And, um, but we are monitoring and we are involved with that project um, all the way through. So, um, but again, not necessarily part of the market district placemaking component of all of this. So, but thank you for that. Um, Susan Emanuel wanted me to mention, and I will reiterate here while we have about eight minutes and still no hands raised in the, um, in the participants column. So um, that all these recorded sessions, including the, the individual's comments and questions will be posted to the website. So you'll be able to see the full video. And if you have the tolerance, listen through all of the, the, uh, the comments that people made and the responses that were given, and also listen to us just talk and fill dead airspace. Um, if you really want to do that, it will be available to you just for transparency um, and, and, and open on the, on the website. Um, again, I'm tracking seven minutes left. Um, in about two minutes, I'll start the wrap up. So if, if anybody wants to um, raise their hand or put a chat down, I would appreciate it. And um, otherwise we'll sit in here and look at each other on Zoom, I guess, for a few more minutes. But um, appreciate everyone's participation. I'll fill the dead air a little bit. Uh, Sue Tansky, uh, project manager for the Market District Placemaking. Do you wanna add anything? I just wanted to say thank you for everybody um, who's participated, who sent me emails, who's welcomed me into their stores and restaurants. Um, I'm falling in love with Market District. Um, it's, it's a wonderful place. I enjoy, I enjoy it very much. So I enjoy being part of this team. I love building parks and trails and greenways. It's my favorite thing to do. Um, building playgrounds is a lot of fun as well. So thank you. That's, that's great. I mean, thank you for that. Um, again, uh, Susan Emanuel keeping me on point. I got to pump up our website, TallahasseeMarketDistrict.com. Um, go there, go often. Um, I don't know if we get paid by the hit like Google does, but you know, um, we, we put it up there with your tax dollars to communicate. So please utilize that resource, share it with your friends um, and keep them informed. And, and uh, we, wanna, we wanna highly involve community in this project. Um, so with that, I am showing 324 and a half. So I'll go ahead and start the wrap up since it seems like some of our attendees are dropping off. And um, I just wanted to, again, thank everybody who took time to participate. We, do, we did receive great feedback and with which will help us develop a project that reflects the community's wishes to the best of our ability. Um, remember, we will post the Q&A to the website under the frequently questioned tab. Um, as for next steps, all the information collected in these sessions, as well as others, will be refined into what can be implemented on the site to ensure that the parks, um, that the park reflects the citizens' expectations that is, is within the allocated budget and site constraints. Uh, the consultant park designer, Hargraves Jones, in collaboration with DVP, will develop these concepts for IA board consideration based on your input and will be presented to the community in December of this year. Again, specifics will be posted to TallahasseeMarketDistrict.com and it does still remain the best resource for accurate and timely information about all the components of the Market District multi-purpose stormwater project in parks. Thank you again, everybody, for your participation. Um, and we are always super excited when people show up to our town halls and our public involvements because it makes it so much more exciting. Thanks again, everybody. Have a great afternoon and um, enjoy your Wednesday. All right, Susan, if we want to stop the video.